us to ignorance and confusion. Three men arose from humble beginnings with a message of wisdom and hope for their troubled times. Three men who would eventually change the very face of humanity. But they just got a call from Robert Mueller. So, here are some other guys. It's Song Talk Radio with Michael, Neil, Phil, and the gang. Good Afternoon. evening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back to the show. This is, of course, Song Talk Radio episode 285. And, of course, this is the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters all about the craft of songwriting, the ideas we share, tips and tools and things we figured out along the way, and our opinions and stuff. And together we'll all learn five new things each and every time about how to write better songs, I think. That's a good, good rule of thumb. Keeping track. Mm-hmm. Tonight I'm, well, tonight I'm Phil Emery, but I'm, I'm ah, Phil Emery. See, most I've learned of the something nights. already. <laughs> Most nights that I'm was Phil different Emery. than the last time I saw you. Phil. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, with me are the somewhat dedicated members of the Song Talk Radio Action Team. Neil, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Uh, glad to be back. By golly, it's been a while. It has. It's been. Uh, it's been, been, a, been a bunch of weeks. It's been a bunch of weeks for me. Yeah, yeah I know. You've been on the road. You've been, been touring. On the road, and then we didn't have a show last week. I and, know. Uh, nice. So but how it feels you, like I never left. That's right. So are you are you still are you still with the hospital? Are you still working? What's what's I'm happening? I'm still you know? working the hospital yeah. thing. Any yeah. children? Or? No, 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 nothing I know yet? of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Michael Proudfoot. How are you doing, Michael? I, I'm I'm well. I'm just confused now. What the hospital and the children? Like, it's a hospital f- for children, sure. or those are just two separate comments? I I took them as two separate comments. Okay. I was trying to find the link. Yeah. My mistake. <laughs> okay. I thought that was something the hospital, I learned. Back down to one. If you really must know, is it regional. It's okay. regional. We do fine work. Yes. We appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, All so, right. Thank you very well, much. Well, thanks for being with us tonight. It's my are. pleasure. That's true. So far. <laughs> <laughs> and on social media, it's Rita. Hi, Rita. Hey. Rita, is that is that a mic? Is that actually on? It is. Uh, no, that's right. You can have your own mic now, Rita. <laughs> uh oh. <Uh-oh. laughs> and um, Mike is off. Uh, Gallivanting, like. gallivanting, gallivanting around, frolicking in the woods. You know, during the show, Gambling. why don't you send us your comments and questions and thoughts and other stuff to to uh, to us on Twitter at Song Talk Radio, or send us an email at feedback at songtalk.ca. Or you can send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. We'll get that too, and we'll um, ask your questions on um, in real time. Answer the questions. Answer the time. questions, and of course, don't forget you can always stop by songtalk.ca to find out how you can be guests on the show and other good stuff. So, uh, Michael, you said you were t- had some stuff happening? Oh, yeah. Well, this is more for uh, our Toronto listeners. Uh, tomorrow is the 16th anniversary of the Great Blackout. Uh, oh, I'm not going to do the math. Uh, uh, 2003? 2003? Yeah. yeah. But, but, anyway. it was the, but the Blackout was like the entire eastern seaboard. It was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Toronto. No. But Toronto does celebrate it. So there will be a Blackout party celebration starting in Nathan Phillips Square. And then there'll be a parade to an unknown location. And oh, cool. I'm not sure what this will entail, but past times, uh, there was one like it went to the Ossington Strip. So between Dundas and Queen, all the bars in between uh, turned off their lights and just lit uh, their restaurants with candles, had acoustic music, and only took cash. So all the music is unplugged. Exactly. The whole street is unplugged. Yes. As wow. if there was no electricity exactly. to celebrate the blackout. Do you guys cool. remember well, where you were during the blackout? I was. I was at home. And thank yep. God I had a transistor radio. And it kind of went, okay, is it just this block? Is it across the street? Is mm-hmm. it my neighborhood? And it just, and then I turned on the radio and I realized, oh my God, it's the end of the world. <laughs> but it, it worked out great because people, you know, they had uh, meat in their freezer that they had to cook. And so people were having barbecues and inviting their neighbors. It was a really right, right, cooperative right. time yeah, of we, year. Yeah, we had a freezer full of food that we, we didn't have a barbecue. So we had to, most of it go to waste. Oh no. But we, we did, we did venture out that first night looking for some, some something to eat, whatever. Right, right. right. And there was a place, uh, this was near Dundas and Blur. There was a place on mm-hmm. Dundas West, just south of Blur Street. Um, that they had a gas oven in the back. It was a pizza place. Oh, right. Le- Leonardo's Pizza, a couple of like Arab guys in the back putting all like wicked spices and stuff. The lineup was like out the door. Oh, <laughs> the, the lights were off, but the oven was working. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a gas stove, so I actually oh, wasn't, nice. I was not too, well. too inconvenienced. Nice. I was um, actually on holiday in Wasega Beach with some friends. Oh, oh wow. And um, yeah, so we just 
basically did what we were doing anyways, except we just barbecued more. Right. Yeah. Oh, so the black outreach, how far north did it reach? Oh, it was, it was definitely, I think, well up to northern Ontario. So does it go further north in Ontario past Sega Beach? Apparently it does. <laughs> <laughs> so the There's a whole go. lot of Ontario. I mean, it took me a while to realize that, you know, <laughs> Finch and Steels, that wasn't uh, cottage country. Mm-hmm. No, But that's apparently, true. no, it's further apparently north. Apparently not, no. Um, but, uh, yeah, we were off the last couple of weeks. So last week, uh, the station was, our station was closed. Yeah, it wasn't our fault. Yeah. And uh, the week before that, um, something happened. We had a show before. Oh, we all got really hammered and couldn't make it in. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Was that during the show? <laughs> that's during the show as well. Um, yes. So uh, when um, I did get... Do you a, have any news? I, I do, actually. Um, someone sent me, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was, uh, sent me a message on Twitter asking me if I've been using uh, Toonsmith and Rhyme Genie much and what oh. I've thought about that. We did a, a show about uh, reviewing uh, songwriting apps a while ago. We need oh, to I do see. And that. what are those two apps? What do they um, do? Song, uh, rhyme Genie is a, a very advanced uh, rhyme application, so it helps you um, uh, find rhymes for words. I see. Um, like, like B-rhymes. Is yeah, it, it has all com. sorts of very times, yeah. r- times, r- times of rhymes. It has where those uh, it has also phrases from those rhymes, uh-huh. and it's actually very advanced. Um, but uh, what's really interesting is I actually have been using it a lot, but I've been using it with the application called TuneSmith, and TuneSmith is sort of, in some ways. Rhyme Genie is sort of something like that plugs into TuneSmith. TuneSmith is a database where you put in all your songs, all your co-writers, all the information about the songs, like the um, the ITSC codes and your and your SoCan. What's an ITSC code? Um, it's um, actually a bit of code that goes into your files uh, that makes it easier to track when your stuff is played on radio. Oh, so it's oh. like the metadata metadata on MP3s ITSC? and stuff like that. Kind of like that. Okay. Yeah. How do you get one of those? Uh, you register on a website. Uh, put more I'll find out the website. But then the government can track your songs. Well, that's right, right, man. <laughs> that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But so TuneSmith uh, is, is great. It, it, it lets you uh, control, uh, you put into a, um, a database, like basically everyone you've written with. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you, and then um, there's another section for uh, your songs. And you have the song information about when you wrote it. Uh, you can like tag it with things like whether it's in, pro- you know, whether you've recorded it, whether it's in, in, in work in progress, um, who the collaborators are, what the split is between the collaborators. Collaborations, whether right. you, you know someone did just the music or did the lyrics or, or doing the arrangements, um, but it also has um, along with that it has a field where you can attach an MP3 mm-hmm. um, to the record, but it also has a lyric uh, section where you can actually write lyrics, and the combination between TuneSmith and Rhyme Genie really works well in this format, so that you'll you know you you start writing your lyrics, and then you have a word, and then you can you click on the word, and the one Bad thing about TuneSmith is there's no sort of pop up um, uh, uh, tool tips. Mm-hmm. So, and it has a lot of icons. So, a lot of times you, you click on the icons and you're not really sure what they do at the mm-hmm. beginning. But then, you know, so you highlight a word and then you click on something, which I think it's supposed to be a genie bottle. Uh-huh. It doesn't look like a genie bottle, it just looks like something weird. <laughs> but, anyways, that opens it up, the word up in Rhyme Genie and it gives you all the different kinds of rhymes. And you can um, cool. say, you know, where you want the rhyme to be, um, you know, how many syllables you want um, to. Uh, to attach to it. It's really, really advanced. It's a really great piece of work, actually. I've been using a pen and a piece of paper like a sucker. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, Toonsmith is a really handy tool. Even Alistair was uh, quite impressed with it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you get a chance. We'll add a, a link to the show notes. So even that. Alistair? Uh, Alistair, Alistair Bradley. Bradley, who was one of our... our uh, uh, guest or he's oh, yeah. seasons oh, wow. songwriter. Right, and he does... Uh, does he do that song studio thing with He does a song studio with, with Blair, Blair. Packham. Yes, right. yeah. And uh, I noticed that Blair Packham and another frequent guest of ours, Patrick Valentine, are playing a gig yes, together sometime soon. Yeah. I think tomorrow, yes. isn't it? I think so. Yes, I'd say what? Uh, well, I guess they're not playing the blackout party, are they? No. They actually met through our show. Did they? They did, yes. Another there successful collaboration due to Song, song Talk. Song Talk Radio. And did yeah. we song get a cut? Pump. No. no. <laughs> we get nothing. That's because we don't have one of those IRC C codes. Uh, exactly. Things. One of them, their codes. Should put, we should have put things. a chip in their brains. <laughs> uh, so, Neil, do you have any news? Oh, sorry. D- did you finish? Did, I, I did finish. Was, okay, I, I didn't know if that, that, that was it. Uh, 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 well, yeah, on a, on, a, on a personal note, I did. Um, I, I presented a new song at the at the songwriters meetup last time mm-hmm. and got some good feedback and tried to implement it. Now I've got two versions of the song. 
and I'm not sure which one is better. <laughs> oh, interesting. Because, <laughs> because you know, it's always a balanced thing. When you take something, when you change something, you're taking oh, away yeah. from an aspect that you liked and maybe putting a different something that you you didn't like. Because it was a little, was, the verses were a little symmetrical uh, in my first version, mm -hmm. and they the people that meet up were like, you need a little more syncopation or a different melody on the on some of the lines, something like that. So I tried that, but then I lost the interesting chord progression. <laughs> I, it's <laughs> funny <laughs> how that works because the song talk meet up, you get some really good feedback, and yeah. And it's really hard sometimes to take it in the in the at the in the moment because you're so locked into in your head. This yeah. is the structure of the song, well, and, and they go, "Oh, how about you just change the arrangement?" I go, "It couldn't possibly work." And then you know you try it at home later, and they go, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, it worked yeah. out kind of well." Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's good. Now, so when you have a this version where you have more than one version of the song, mm -hmm. um, do you play it to people and try to? Make yeah, a actually, or? well, the the song I'm writing is is for the band I'm in, Bay Shelter, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch basically I'm gonna li listen to them again, um, and if I can't make a decision myself, I'm just gonna hand it over to the band and say, hey, which version do you guys like? And then right. take a so vote. <laughs> one one of the many good things about being in a band, you get arbiters. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, does this song of yours, Neil? Have a chorus. As a matter of fact, it does, and it and it's and it's a big melodic jump, actually. Excellent, because yeah. not all songs have choruses, yes. do they, fellas? That's <laughs> true. No, they don't. What? Now that's what's known as a segue in the radio yeah. business. Yeah. So know. yes, today we're talking about songs without a chorus, and this and Michael, this was your sort of brain. Yeah, I part. I mean one of the things that uh, I enjoy about song talk radio is when. Uh, people come in and they talk about the structure of songs and, and, uh, and especially in accessible ways. Uh, you know, so I must admit sometimes when we're talking about tritones and, and uh, modes and things like that, I, I get a bit lost. But mm -hmm. when it comes to song structure and verse and chorus and pre-chorus and bridges and, and things like that, sometimes even chords, I can keep up. Right. And so I was just thinking uh, about the structures of songs, and, and I think because I was doing some songwriting and kind of playing around with it, uh, you know, get, gotten some suggestions, uh, you know, lose this piece or move that to the front. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, there are songs without choruses. And uh, so, uh, and I think it was just coincidental, I'd read uh, an article about uh, a squeeze song called Up the Junction, and how that came about, and it's a song without a chorus. And uh, they referenced, when they wrote it, that they thought, oh, we want it to be like uh, the Roxy Music song, Virginia Plain, another song without a chorus. Mm -hmm. oh, right. And so I started thinking, well, how many songs are there without choruses, especially successful you know, radio hits? Mm -hmm. And so I said to you guys, hey, hey guys, let's do a show about songs yeah, without choruses. choruses. Yeah. So let's all and but here we are. There's, now, there's a difference between songs not having a chorus and songs that have a refrain. Yes, so, so I think it goes to an yeah. older style of of songwriting, you know, like so uh, hymns yeah. so were songs that had refrains but not refrain. choruses. Now, usually a refrain is usually the last line of a verse. Yeah. Um, yeah a famous one lines, would yeah. be uh, Billy Joel, She's Always a Woman to Me. That's what I was that thinking of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, a, lot, a lot of Bob Dylan songs to that. A lot of blues right? stuff it, it, it's a very Yeah, it's a very yeah. blues thing. It's a very yeah. folk thing to do as well, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and the interesting thing about about listening for them is is what we call, like, focus listening, right? Because when, when I... When I Selected my song for this uh, mm -hmm. for this uh, episode. I was just basically going through like shuffle play on my iPod and just going through a bunch of songs. But listening particularly, yeah, this one's got a chorus. Of course, this one's got a chorus. Oh, wait, there's one that doesn't have a chorus. Yeah, maybe that's a contender. And then found a couple more. That, oh, yeah, that definitely does not have a chorus. And and you're right, Phil. Like sometimes it gets the line becomes a little bit blurry because yeah. is it more like a chorus or is it more like a pre-chorus or is it more like an extension of the verse or is it more like a refrain? And and sometimes it gets fuzzy. Yeah, and it's open to interpretation. To a certain extent. I mean, some I think, don't have any well, at all. True. Like, yeah, they don't have refrains. They don't, I mean, the, the one I had. I think the song, although, you know, in, in songwriting structure, you'll have, you know, there's like verses, there's choruses, there's a refrain, which is the end, of, usually a part of the uh, part of a verse. Mm -hmm. You have a bridge um, and, you know, sometimes a pre chorus. Uh, you have an intro but, and you know, like an intro. extra. But I yeah, think, like, you need something in a coda. song that kind of acts like a chorus in terms of there's a hook. That's repeated um, either in a melody line or in um, maybe a, a, a syncopation or, um, or or a lyric that acts kind of like a chorus that people go, oh, yeah, here it comes, and, and sort yeah. of attaches. Yeah, all something that. memorable in yeah. it. Yeah. Because yeah. when, you, when you think about the word itself, chorus, like what's the other application for the word chorus? It's a choir. 
Right. It's a bunch of people singing together. So, I mean, that's, that's your number one criteria. If the audience can sing it back to you, Instantly or on the next yeah. repeat. Yeah, that's a chorus. Ideally, that would be a good chorus yeah. or yeah. but it could be a refrain Yeah, what, what, I, what yeah. I what I actually looked up uh, on this internet thing and I asked <laughs> that that, I said now. Alexa it's What's a song? What's a chorus? Uh, <laughs> a, anyway, uh, so a musical professor said that it should have a repeated melody and uh, and lyrics and lyric. Yeah uh, I don't know if that, you know, there's probably, it's probably sure. a, f- a flexible definition, but yeah, that, that's a pretty that good seems place pretty start, good though. because, yeah. uh, and also that it tends to be higher in pitch than the verses and whatnot. Or, right. or higher in energy. Higher Sometimes in energy. the two go, uh, I think the, the person had mentioned that the human voice tends to be more emotional at a higher pitch. So it does oh, okay. right. generate that anyway. It sort of cuts through the, the yeah. noise of the music too. Because often, often you'll have you know, a verse and a chorus that have the same chord progression, but then the mel- melody mm. just takes this giant leap right. Yeah. or something. And so it's yeah. clear, clear that that's a chorus. But mm. there are different ways of doing As I found with these songs without choruses, some are just kind of old style where they just kind of repeat a verse Mm-hmm. shape mm-hmm. until it ends but uh, I think the song you picked Neil mm-hmm. which uh, I think we should we should get to doesn't do that it has a number of different musical parts it just doesn't have a chorus right it's got sort of two musical parts but the melody changes a lot yeah. uh, from verse to verse um, and uh, yeah it's just got some it's got some interesting breaks and and that sort of thing but generally right. there's only there's only sort of two musical like there's two different chord progressions right. so there's an I A see. part and a B part in that sense okay um, should we give so, it a spin yeah we'll take a look so let's, so, let's talk about the song first yeah so the, the song I picked is uh, Underwhelmed by Sloan their first which album their, their first single their first album first single and actually because part of the discussion we had about this show was that it's, it's kind of easy to go back to like some you know weird you know, indie song or a progressive rock song or something like that, which is not even designed to have a chorus. But yeah. when you're looking at sort of standard pop rock format or folk country, yeah, format, trying to get radio airplay, trying to get radio and... airplay, you know, so Underwhelmed was actually um, was the band's most successful single outside Canada. Peaked at number 25 on modern uh, rock tracks in 1993, and uh, in 2007, CFNY FM in Toronto ranked the song number one on their list of top 102 Canadian new rock songs. So mm-hmm. this one was certainly. Was, I mean, I remember hearing this. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a big hit. Got them a deal with Geffen. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, so this is uh, Sloan with Underwhelmed. Crank it, man. She was underwhelmed, if that's a word. I know it's not, because I looked it up. That's one of the skills that I learned in my school.
Andrew Welland, by Sloan, songwriters Andrew Scott, Chris Murphy, Jay Ferguson, and Patrick Pettenfland. Yeah, and if you if you know Sloan and the different songwriting songwriters and the way they write songs, this is they, they always credit all the songwriters, but mm. this is a Chris Murphy song. Any song that's about grammar and it's got l- wacky wordplay and stuff like that. That's, that's, <laughs> oh yeah, is that, that that's totally one, a Chris one of the song. tells? That's one of the tells. It's definitely a Chris song. I do love that line. Um, um, uh, she wrote a, song, a story, uh, wrote a story about her life. I think it includes something about me. I'm not sure of that, but one thing, but I'm sure of one thing. Her spelling's, spelling's atrocious. atrocious. And of course, yeah. the, the lyrics sheets are up on the website. Yes, songtalk.ca. Yeah. And with Sloan, yeah, you get your money's worth with the lyrics. I like yeah. affection has two Fs, Fs, especially when you're dealing with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And I, I, I was I always loved that that break. She said it's okay, but I just felt I felt like I just ate my young. Yeah. Yeah. A great line. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah. yeah. So the big question. Yes. Is there a chorus is or a, a refrain course? with you know, but not in uh, what was it? Uh, there's the same musical uh, so melody yeah. that yeah. repeats, yeah. So but I, not in hers. But I not in hers. The point. And while yeah. I tended mine, so there there is there is a bit of a chord change there. Like it, it goes to a, they go to a different. It's basically a one yeah. four five song, and then that section goes like four five one or something like that. Like yeah. just a mm-hmm. you know a basic a little thing. I think you could interpret that as a chorus. I tend to see it more because lyrically it's an extension of the verse. It doesn't repeat re- doesn't repeat verbatim on second time and the third time. The That's lyrics right, change. which is one of the things we said: repeated yeah. melody and words. And yeah. and. Chord wise and stuff, it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't pick up in in in, no. the, in the in the melody, and it kind of sounds more like a pre-chorus. It's, it sort of sounds more like an extension of the verse to me than than a chorus. I think choruses tend to actually make a very specific statement. Yes, which I don't think this one. Does. Yeah, like you wouldn't take any of those moments and call that the title of the, the song, song for yeah, example yeah 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 because yeah, often I, I, i've said this before on, on the show you can think about your songs especially with verse chorus songs your chorus is sort of your thesis and your uh, your verses are sort of your supporting arguments right right so if you got your central idea that's that and your that, bridge that, is the the the, the counterpoint yeah the bridge is the yeah. counterpoint right <laughs> um so Does so yeah if, you, if you've got a strong central idea and hook then that's going to tend to be your chorus that that certainly doesn't apply in this song no no yeah so, so yeah, no, I think it's actually fair. It's it's yeah. not something I would would you know. So we'll, we'll give this one a pass. No chorus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but on the other hand, yeah. it's, it, it's it's not just a series of verses because if it was, it wouldn't be as interesting. Yeah, there no. is that there is that subtle change, the small change yeah. with the repeated lyric. You know, even though it's different repeated lyric yeah. on three times, with a subtle change, and then they kick back and which would be the more uh, kind of old timey style of songwriting with it's just right. verse and maybe refrain, verse and refrain, or just yeah. a series of verses that have a, a repeated melody that's. Kind of yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they also are able to keep the song interesting because there is lots of little details all the way through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, um, like a, you know, a uh, little break where uh, they hit uh, I Just Ate My Young. Yeah. Um, it does that they, to kind of stop. Yeah. Um, and it, I mean, I mean, they're great songwriters, but they're very, they're, they actually are very careful. I mean, there's actually mm-hmm. a lot of words in this. And there's a lot of words yeah. in this. Yeah. And this is their first single. This is the first one out of the gate. So it's pretty, in, pretty kind of bold yeah. or unusual yeah. song to be your first single and a hit single yeah and matter. certainly this didn't get on top pop radio but it's certainly on the rock charts it was it was up there yeah. right yeah well this came out right after nirvana yeah, yeah. and know, so nirvana. and this is when the beginning of halifax is being the new grunge scene because right. re- re- record labels were looking everywhere for more nirvana right and sloan definitely benefited from that they got a lot of attention a yeah. lot of money and, and really this this first album, this album. is the only that that's kind of a shoegazing album yeah this and kind of grunge they, they kind of took off on their own yeah because um yeah. what was it twice removed was the Second album, which was very Beatlesque, yeah. yeah. very poppy. Yeah. Record company hated it, dropped them. Yeah, right. so. but they have their own label now. So. Yeah, they, they figured saying, out. Yeah, a good story so they, they, yeah, they. I'm not quite sure exactly how it works. There's a great book called "Have Not Been the Same," which is about modern Canadian music. What's it called? I have not been the same. Which have is not been the same. Yeah, it's. Do you know that um, slow song? There's a band out of. Uh, BC called oh. Slow. Oh yeah, and that was their single. Have not been the same. Anyway, mm. it's uh, it's about Canadian music, and it's it's really thick and, and has lots of great stories. Anyway, one of the stories was about Sloan, and so they had this deal, I believe, with Geffen. They re- gave them uh, gave them their second record, Twice Removed, when Geffen did not like it, and so they stood by their guns. I think they got some good lawyers, and they managed to extract themselves from that deal with Geffen and negotiate another deal where they got their own record label, Murder Records, mm. and they could release what they wanted and oh. also sign other acts. So they've been, I think, pretty independent since then. 
and produce tons of fantastic records. Yeah. Yes. Well, so it turns right. out not all bands need the help of the record label to write good songs. That is true. There they're also fantastic live. You've got a chance to see them. Oh, live. they're amazing. They're my favorite live band, hands yeah. down. Yeah. But right. um, yes, that was, that was uh, Underwhelmed by Slow Bay. It was always a, a great song to get you moving. Yeah, and for sure. I mean, when you go to, go to a live show, when they kick out this song, like, you, you, you hope that everyone sings along with the chorus. All the fans are singing along with every single word. Right. Of that song. <laughs> and do they play it like with the stop on? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. They, they play, don't yeah. mess it up or mm, play it? No, not that I've heard. They, they don't play do a reggaeton every... version, say? No, 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 certainly not. Okay. Yeah, they, 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 they take this one as, as it is, for sure. Well, talking about things that some people like to uh, sing along with. Yeah, let's uh, hear this segue, Phil. <laughs> maybe you could actually sing along with the following messages from these sponsors. <laughs> and we're back <laughs> for those uh, just joining us you're listening to song talk radio streaming on songtalk.ca and tonight we're talking about songs without a chorus and don't, don't forget we'd love to hear from you even during the show so please share your thoughts and your questions any ideas that you have for songs without choruses please send it to at song talk radio on twitter Facebook or Instagram, or send an email to feedback at songtalk.ca. Was that uh, feedback at songtalk.ca? That is feedback at songtalk.ca. Oh. Can you spell that, please? That would be F E E D B A C K. We're bringing feedback uh, at songtalk.ca. <laughs> feedback back. <laughs> yeah. So please share your thoughts and uh, we will uh, answer your question. We'll ask you a lot of questions here. No, we'll answer your questions. But yeah, if you have suggestions of songs without courses, we'd love to hear it. Uh, coming up soon on Song Talk Radio, August 20th, our friend Frank Horvat. And uh, Catherine Frid are going to be here talking about collaborating and making a musical. They had a hit musical in the Toronto Fringe, mm -hmm. Spend Your Kids Inheritance. It was a patron's choice, so they got an extra show, so I imagine it will get remounted. Yeah. So Frank and Catherine will be here to talk all about that. Yeah, I went to go see that, actually. It was really funny and heartwarming and wonderful. It, oh, it, yeah, you it, saw it. And then the songs were catchy and great. Yeah, oh, excellent. Absolutely. And then August 13th, that doesn't seem right, because that's today. Oh yeah. So so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some. Just, just I'm gonna, add, just add let me add seven. seven. Yeah. Uh, August twentieth, and it will be August. Yeah, the one carry up. So on August twenty seventh, <laughs> we'll be talking about soundtracks, and we'll probably have uh, someone oh, who yeah, has actually, done I just, some. I just oh, did Jeff confirm today? it? Uh, no, uh, Matthew Reed oh, will be joining our, us. Our, our good friend Matt Reed will oh, be fantastic. back. Yeah. And so we'll be talking about soundtracks and uh, our favorites and. And all the ones we hate. No, just just <laughs> just good, just good stuff and positivity. That's right. <laughs> um, and so today we are positively talking about songs without choruses. Yes. One of the things that I noticed listening to the Sloan song we just played, reading the lyrics of the song that you have coming up, Phil, and the song that I have, uh, is they all tend to be story songs. You know, they, they really oh, tend yeah. to, uh, I mean, maybe yeah. that's the nature of it. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, certainly if you got a song with lots of words and they're all different, then mm. maybe it kind of, it kind of, right. But you know, if, if, if that's the place you're starting, then but, it can, uh, as it, I mean, it's, they tend to be very, um, literal and chronological in, in that way. Right. Uh, in a way that a lot of other songs don't feel the need to be, mm -hmm. uh, even, uh, I was looking like they, some people are saying that uh, Bohemian Rhapsody is a song without, uh, without a chorus. Mm -hmm. That's true. And it? it does kind of tell a story. White Rabbit, I don't know if that tells a, a linear story. Who's White Rabbit? Uh, Jefferson's <gasps> Airplane. Oh, right, right. Just ask Alice when she's, yeah. Uh, Paranoid Android. Yeah. I was thinking oh, yeah. the same That doesn't really have a story so much though does it it's more of a dream <laughs> yeah it's or it's just it's yeah. it's a kind of a, it is randomly yeah, paranoic yeah. yeah uh but um so yeah but it but, but certainly that's definitely something, that's it, something to think about if you if you are a lyricist first then think about what structure best conveys the feeling of the song right yeah uh, and and is, uh, it is it a song with a refrain or a chorus or without a chorus or whatever the case may be. I tend to work in a you know mostly pop idiom where it's first chorus or pre-chorus yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. So I, I often have to consciously challenge myself to uh, see if I can tell a, a story or you know, have a song that still sounds like a song that makes sense. You know when you change the melody or when you go to a chorus or whatever that it has a logic to it. Right. And it's it's definitely a lot more challenging 
to break away from a standard pop format. True, it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's um, and I know the the song that you brought, uh, Michael, is is very much of a story. Very much. Show. Yeah, I mean, it's got a uh, beginning, middle, and end. You know, it's it's quite linear, actually. Yeah, and it's it doesn't even have a refrain or repeated uh, melody like Sloan did. Uh, the song I brought in is Up the Junction by Squeeze. Uh, it's just a bunch of the verses. Uh, what they do is they do change the melody uh, added by about the fourth or fifth one. But aside from having kind of a, a, a keyboard hook at the beginning and the end, it's the same melody. And one of the things it does, I, I think that the, the lyricist was uh, uh, Chris... Different. I can't remember now. Uh, uh, he was the lyricist, and he just uh, was inspired by a lot of um, kitchen sink dramas that he'd seen as a kid growing up. And in what are kitchen sink dramas? They are uh, sort of anti-glamour. Uh, they were uh, they're you know ugly people or regular looking people. Not glam. Uh, life isn't glamorized, and it's this you know it's the stories of working class people. It was a, a revolution initially in Britain in uh, in the theater, where playwrights like John Osborne, dared to write about lower-class people. Mm -hmm. And in Britain, that was a big deal because class is a huge, huge thing. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then it, it became a, a, a cinematic style as well, mm -hmm. uh, films of Ken Loach, and that was one of the things that um, the lyricist of The Squeeze pointed out that that was where he got that idea from. Oh. And they were on tour, and uh, he said it took the time it takes to sing it to write it. He said that the words just came out. He wow. handed them off to Glenn Tilbrook, the singer, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, the uh, a more the musician of the of the pair, and Is he wrote this. Two? Just two guys? Um, no, there's uh, Jules Holland mm -hmm. and a few other players that came and went. At one point, uh, I think Rod, Ar Rod Argent, maybe, because okay. uh, Tempted was one of the new guys. All right. Yeah. That's the song everyone knows. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this was, I think, off their first album. And, uh, yeah, they wrote it quickly. And I think what really what makes it is uh, Glenn Tilbrook has an amazing voice. Mm. And he wrote a really great melody for this. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is up to Junction. Oh, the video, by the way, just... Uh, they shot the video at John Lennon's house, the one oh. where he, uh, where they recorded Imagine, like the, oh, wow. where he's playing the white piano. So, nice. oh. not that you could tell because it's just all close ups and they, <laughs> they, they, look, they look drunk. So, this is uh, Up the Junction by Squeeze. No choruses here, man. I feel 
feel there's something missing I beg for some forgiveness But begging's not my business And she won't write a letter Though I always tell her And so it's my assumption I'm really up the junction That was Up the Junction by Squeeze, a song without a chorus. Mm -hmm. Christopher Henry Dilford and Glenn Martin Tilbrook, the songwriters. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's interesting. The uh, verses is sort of, it's the one phrase which is repeated like the... Um, you mean the cadence of it? <laughs> Um, so that's interesting. Uh, and the rhymes on the end of the line were mm -hmm. very strong all the way through. Basement engagement, telly, smelly, kissing, missing, hooked up, and time it took up, which I thought mm -hmm. was cool. Forgiveness, business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I noticed about this song, the um, so ev at the end of every verse, if you want, or every other verse, uh, so in the first one, like it's like like you say, uh, feel the way the melody goes. But on the very last line, perhaps she said, "I may be," and it, yeah. and it carries. And even even the even the rhythm section of the band is like, bum, 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 bum. Yeah. here comes the chorus. Yeah, but no, they it's go back to yeah. the verse. I know and they, 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 they tease, they, they tease, they tease, and even even so, there is this one other section. I worked all through the winter. The weather brass and bitter. It feels different. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's musically different. It's musically different. Uh, the the lines are a little bit tighter. The melody, the melody of the, the vocal melody is different. different. So, I mean, it's, it, it, but I don't think it qualifies as a chorus. It's just a beat part. Yeah, and yeah, it never comes back, no. that section. And then what they do, I noticed, to uh, keep interest is they really play at the song's dynamics, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, and it, but it, it sort of builds up on that part yeah. and then gets the verse after, I think, is bigger. But then the final chorus is very sparse. You know, yeah. Uh, not course. The final verse, the final verse is, yeah. is the and verse is sparse. so sparse it's not even it there. It doesn't there. even exist. Yeah. And, and of course, they end with the title. Yeah, I'm up. I'm here. I'm really up, up the, the junction. junction yeah. very, the title doesn't show up till the very end. So I take it up the junction is a is a British. Yeah, it means you're screwed. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and and so uh, one of the um, uh, kitchen sink dramas would be things like um, uh, Coronation Street, I suppose. I guess in a way. I mean, it's a soap, but yeah. 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 Uh, but um, I don't know. Because Coronation Street, like, no one's attractive and no one has any hope. That's that's <laughs> true. Oh, yeah. And uh, you're going to Manchester. That's right. Yeah, we're just going to Manchester. What are you going to Manchester? Oh, jeez, really? Uh, September. September. Yeah. Yeah. September. Yeah, does that take place? I think it takes place in Manchester. I think it does, yeah. yeah. I thought it was London. No. No, no. No, it's it's definitely the... The North, isn't it? I believe so. Yeah, if not the by the accents, yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the very fact is, but yeah, I mean, it very often features yeah young people of limited means who make decisions that make their lives worse. Yes, which as we all and, do. pretty well is and, that song. And, and of the people around them. <laughs> yes, exactly. And what's great is like the people actually look like real people. They don't mm -hmm. look like glamorous or beautiful. They just look like yeah someone you would. I mean, it's a very British thing to do. It's they like very normal looking people. Yeah. Um, and well, I guess it's two different industries, the way that the, uh, I mean, Hollywood is the dream factory. I don't think uh, the British film industry was ever... Yeah, yeah. A dream factory? No. I don't think it ever had that sort of uh, aspiration. <laughs> I what you had, to, had for uh, dinner before you went to bed. Well, it was originally uh, government, right? That's government right. Government funded, so it would be propaganda and education. So it, right. there would be an aspect of reality to it that it felt it owed Yes. Whereas Hollywood, eh, it didn't feel that yeah. way. So it sort of reminds me of one of my favorite British films, Secrets and Lies, by oh, uh, yeah. Mike, Michael Lay, because oh, that yeah. was very much kind of a slice of life. Yeah, so he's yeah. A very much considered, would be like yeah. a kitchen sink drama kind of guy. Yeah, he and yeah. Ken Loach were... Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, Mike I used to Lay. watch... Uh, Coronation Street, but it just got too depressing. <laughs> it was just like, too, much, too much tragedy. I mean, you know, I, it's not real. Well, that's true. 
But I mean, I was really poor at the time, and you know, living in a basement apartment, oh, and yeah. it, just, it, it was just, just it was too close to home. Exactly. Close, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we got one other cut from Phil. Yes. Eighty-eight lines about forty-four women. So I was um, great title. At first, I was not sure what to choose. Uh, nothing came to my mind. It's one of those things you don't, you can't think of offhand, but once you go, oh yeah, then you go, oh, there's another song. Well, that's why yeah. you start listening to stuff and just yeah. seeing what it hit it. You know, uh, oh, yeah, one of the songs what... I thought about was a favorite song of mine called Six Bells Chime. I, I listened to that. Like, it's um, by Crime in the City Solution. Not really a pop song, though, not, is it? Not yeah, a pop it song. Very, it's uh, quite, quite dreary. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful yeah. song. I love the guitar in that. Um, but um, I was talking with Heather, and Heather's got a real great brain for all this stuff. And she said, oh, how about 40, uh, 88 lines about 44 women? Mm-hmm. And I went, oh, yeah, because this is actually one of my favorite songs. Do you know this song, Michael? Did yeah, you, yeah. You know, I, yeah. Never, I never heard this before. It was, uh, it was a big song on CFNY. Yeah. Um, it, I think it hit number 44 on the North American charts. Really? It's a really interesting song in a lot of ways. Um, the song was written um, basically in one sitting. And um, by um, and it features some real women and some made up women. Oh, really? some women it reminds died. me a bit of the people that died. That Jim Carroll song. Oh yeah, look the people mm. died, died. But he has a list of all the you know Jenny, yeah. which you yeah. know they could list all these people who mm. died, who died. Something happened, but yeah. and they all they're all my friends, and they died. <laughs> yeah, it's um one of the really interesting things about the song is. Um, if you can actually, uh, this, this was recorded multiple times by the band, and I think the band could probably, you know, sign bad record deals and, and got screwed by, you know, by lots of people. Um, they apparently they all the money they made was actually by suing people who misused it, really, um, which is unfortunate because mm. it's a great song. It was re- written, it was recorded originally for their first album, which I think was called Motel for Women, and uh-huh. it's very punky and very loose and very dissonant oh. and kind of, wow. um, and it was recorded again for Mood Swings, which is the big hit. But it was actually remixed a couple of other times because when I was actually a bunch of years ago, I was actually looking for this song. So I'm going, oh, I remember that song; it's really cool. And I kept on finding versions going. That's not the right version. Was it done song. by the same band? Done by the same band, but different recordings. And what's huh. really interesting is what makes this version so great is his vocal delivery. And the way he hits the different words, and he adds a certain personality on many different uh, phrases. Right. And so really pay attention to how he hits those words, because it really does make this song work as well as it does. Um, and the other versions, he didn't sing it quite, quite, quite the same. Not quite the same. It just didn't mm. quite have the magic. It's a very delicate thing. Um, but uh, there's definitely lots of words to this. Yeah. Um, yes. 88 lines, I believe. <laughs> 88, 88 lines, lines. yes. Um, so let's take a listen to 88 lines by about 44 women by the nails from their album Mood Swing. Taboo 
was shattered by her tongue one night. Mimi brought the taboo back and held it up for the light. Marilyn, who knew no shame, was never, ever satisfied. Julie came and went so fast she didn't even say goodbye. in Venice, lived on brown rice and cocaine. Patty had a house in Houston, shot top syrup in her veins. Linda thought her life was empty, filled it up with alcohol. Catherine was much too pretty, she didn't do that shit at all. Uh-huh, not Catherine. was simple, turn it on and turn it off. Jean-Marie was complicated like some French filmmaker's plot. Gina was the perfect lady, always kept her stalking straight. Jackie was a rich punk rocker, silver spoon and a paper plate. Mm -hmm. a modern dancer, lean, pristine transparency. Janet wrote bad poetry in a crazy kind of urgency. Tanya Turkish liked to fuck while wearing leather biker boots. Brenda Strain's obsession was for certain vegetables and fruit. Daughter, the deeper image shook her up. Dee Dee's mother left her father, took his money and his truck. Debbie Ray had no such problems. Perfect Norman Rockwell home. Nina, 16, had a baby, left her parents, lived alone. Bobby joined a new wave band and changed her name to Bobby Socks. Eloise, who played guitar, sang songs about whales and cops. Terry didn't give a shit, was just a nihilist. Ronnie was much more my style than she wrote songs just like this. Jezebel went 40 days drinking nothing but Perrier. Dinah drove her Chevrolet into the San Francisco Bay. Judy came from Ohio. She's a Scientologist. Amaranta, here's a kiss. I chose you to end this list. And that was 88 Lines by f about 44 Women by the Nails. Very cool. Yeah. So what yeah. you Okay. Let's yes. Let's, talk, let's think about it, because there is... Uh, There's that mm, mm It's a hook. It's a... I, I don't know. I think I think of the three songs, that's the most chorus-like. That's the most chorus-like, because chorus -like, it kept repeating. I know it isn't yeah. lyrics, and we kind of said it needed yeah. to be repeating lyric, but it did feel chorus-y yeah. in that sense. It, I mean, uh, at the very least, it's a refrain. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people would definitely sing along with that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Interesting how, you know, how a song keeps going with, in a way, such limited melody or yeah. like that and still be interesting. Mm -hmm. well, uh, one of the things that's interesting is he so almost deliberately doesn't, um, not doesn't rhyme, but uh, he doesn't get into sort of a melody or, or like it. Like, I think if you looked at those lyrics and didn't know the song and read them to something, you would make them hit a, a, a rhythm Mm -hmm. And he yeah. deliberately goes against the rhythm that is implicit in there, which yes. can't have been easy. <laughs> no, no, it's only take a little bit of practice and a little bit of th th mm -hmm. that's where the craftsmanship. Yeah, yeah. Into play, I guess right? it makes it even more conversational or more like yeah. it's a very anti-song in that way. Yeah, like, yes. kind of like what, what Lou Reed did in some songs too. Right? Yes, yes, exactly. Um, is this typical, or what did their other songs sound like, uh, Phil? Um, Pretty, pretty punky uh, in general, I think. So more, yeah. uh, like, did he sing? Yeah, cool, yeah. kind of, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think. Um, and with choruses? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of it, Neil? Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that was that was my thought. I mean, it, it, what's interesting about these all three of these songs is that they're all fairly lyrically driven. They're all long. They're all like four minutes plus. Yeah. Yeah. Considering and they don't have a chorus. They don't have a chorus, but that just that just leaves more room for the verses. Then I guess your verses so. could just go on. And the interesting thing about this one too is that it's in 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 a structural sense, it's so repetitive. But you know it has to stop somewhere because it says eighty eight lines yeah. in the true. title. Right? It's got to stop at eighty eight lines. But no who's counting? But who's counting? But well, you, well, you know, you, you just know that there is a finite end because yeah. Yeah. because this thing could just ramble on forever. It could the way that it's structured. But it doesn't change. I mean, the the squeeze song it modulated by uh, when it came to I think. The, the very last, final, well, the final right, one, right. yeah, or the second yeah, last yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. verse clump. Yeah. Uh, but this is kind of 
relentless in that way. Yeah. And of yeah. course, of course, he ends with Amaretta. Here's a kiss. I choose you to end this list. Yeah. Which yeah. is a little clever wink, wink. Yeah. You, you said some of these are real people. <laughs> yeah. You said some of them are real people and some of them we are made, made up. But we don't know any more biographical no, information no, than no, that. Yeah, okay. He probably changed the names to protect the names of the innocent and or right. guilty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's um, it is an interesting. Um, Exercise as a songwriter um, to talk about um, to, to look at to listen to the different versions and see how his vocal uh, changed. Um, Is that the only thing that changed primarily was the vocal uh, well, the delivery one, or, or the was there any music? Different. Yeah, the production was a bit different too. Yeah, I mean the other, uh, the first one was very unproduced. Um, right. This one is the second recording, and I think there's another recording or, or yes, another remix or a mix of it which is yeah. not quite as strong mm. with which i think with a different vocal the guitar line is really interesting it's almost like that um mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. south african yeah uh, yeah it has a little bit of a feel to it for sure we got a tweet in from uh, sharon uh, um, about uh hi, talking sharon. about oh, what um, does sharon want now <laughs> hi sharon so you need to start um watching um cory again um lots of humor these days i even saw characters talking together smiling and laughing Whoa. yeah i think you, you'd really enjoy cory now it's changed no longer your average Kitchen, kitchen sink, and there are even a few hunks. Oh, wow. There you go, uh -oh. Phil. A few hunks. It's, get, ah, it's getting all so, glossy. Yeah, so Corey is yeah. sold out. And, uh, it's, and <laughs> it's, it's also got a lot uh, more young people, too. Right. Oh, that's true. But, um, you know, it's, this is, a, I think, a really, in some ways, this is such a lyrically driven song. Very much um, so. Seems you know, uh, songs about choruses tend to be. Well, yeah, the three, the three that we picked. I was actually surprised uh, that none of us picked a Beatles song because I think I think you could probably could they have find songs without chorus. I, oh, I, I, tomorrow I, never knows. There you go. Yeah, and and yeah. I'm sure there are numerous examples because we had uh, we had this argument when we did bridges. Remember, Phil? Oh about, yeah. About uh, was it Hard Day's Night or whatever? Whether it had a bridge or two bridges or whatever? Because uh -huh. the Beatles actually played with structure quite a bit. Yeah. And and got fairly experimental with them. So yeah. So did um, the Long Winding Road had? Um, a hey what? Jude doesn't have a chorus. It's got that refrain that everyone sings along. Yeah. With. So maybe there's only one but chorus. That's but a, at the that's end. a coda. Right? Kind of. Would yeah. you say that? Well, like I said, the lines become blurred. You could call it this. You call it that. Like. That's true, but it, or the, but characteristically, yeah. if everyone sing along with it. It's a chorus, maybe because the, the, the melody, the like the "Hey Jude," yeah. is the yeah. beginning of every verse. Yeah, well, right? that's, no, no, that's, no, that's, that's a yeah, refrain, that's but it's at the top refrain. of every yeah. Yeah. verse, right? That's true. Well, lots of lo lots of things to think about tonight. That's right. Because I can hear the band, and that means that's all the time we have tonight They're on Song Talk us Radio. Out. <laughs> yeah, on the show, all about with no choruses. Send us your impressions on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Song Talk Radio. Send us an email at feedback songtalk.ca, and check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes and all sorts of great stuff. And stop by the site at songtalk.ca. Subscribe to the Song Talk Radio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher.com, Spotify podcast addict and just about everywhere else and don't forget to sign up for the free newsletter at songtalk.ca you can find all the links to the products books and web services we mentioned here on this radio called uh, song talk on the uh, resources page and if you happen to be in the toronto area why don't you drop by the next song talk meetup on Thursday, uh, August 22nd from 7 to 10 p.m. at the Transit Club. Free to join on meetup.com. Free to attend. Always good fun. And Mike's going to be uh, hosting that. I one. will be hosting that yeah. and issuing a challenge, something new. Ooh, Ooh, very exciting. Fun. Thank you, Rita, for uh, doing all the social thank media you, stuff. You rock. And most of all, we'd like to thank you. Of course, you we haven't seen the oh, photos oh, yet. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want to follow Neil, you can follow Neil at neilmodi.com. And you can follow... You, know, you, you can't follow me. I leave no trace. <laughs> I'm like a ninja. <laughs> and of course, Ghost. he does. Yeah, I know. So why don't you yeah, follow... Exactly. Why don't you follow Phil at um, uh, the Phil Emery on uh, Twitter.com or thenoise.ca on, on the web. Phil must know. talk about himself in the third person for the remainder of this episode. That's true. <laughs> Stop by the website at songtalk.ca to browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Why don't you listen to us next week? Good night, everyone. Good night. Keep on writing. Drive safe. I thought they'd never leave. <laughs>